excerpt from two hundred and nine ways of preparing the apple by l gertrude mckay phg b s b a acting head of department of domestic economy of the state college of washington pullman washington this is recorded to celebrate the ninth anniversary of librivox all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. The Apple as a Food The apple is, without question, the king of fruits. While it is more easily digested when cooked, it is not difficult of digestion and is most delicious raw. Whether fresh, dried, evaporated, or canned, the apple is a wholesome food, easily prepared, attractive, and palatable at all times. Because of its rare keeping qualities, people in the most remote parts are able to take advantage of its great food value. Apples vary in flavor and texture. They are often marketed before they are mature, and the cooking and keeping qualities are thus injured. None of the soft, insipid apples are suitable for preserving. The sound, tart apples are the best for this purpose. Fine-grained apples are best for sauce and butter, while the coarse-grained varieties are best for marmalade. In the fall and early winter, apples are at their best, and spices need not be added, because their flavor cannot be improved. But toward spring the flavor becomes somewhat flat, and is improved by the addition of spices or other flavorings. Always cook apples in earthen or granite ware utensils, and use silver, granite, or wooden spoons for stirring. The use of the apple as a basis for practically all manufactured jellies and jams is well known. This is due to the large amount of pectose which it contains. There is no waste to a good apple. Even the paring and core may be utilized for jelly. Fruits are classified as flavor fruits and nutritive fruits. The apple comes under both of these heads. Average composition of the apple. Water, 82.5. Carbohydrates, 12.5. Protein, 0.4. Nitrogenous, 0.4. Fats, 0.4. Acids, 1.0. Cellulose, 2.7. From a dietetic standpoint, the most important function of the apple is that of furnishing mineral salts and organic acids. But it has an important nutritive value as well, furnished by the carbohydrates present. As the fruit ripens, the starch changes to sugar. The apple has a medicinal value as well, especially if eaten at the beginning of the meal or between meals. Varieties good for sauce and baking. Alexander, Baldwin, Duchess of Oldenburg, Gravenstein, Grimes Golden, Golden Russet, Gano, Hubbardston, Jonathan, Jeffries, King Peck, Lover, Lead, Maiden Blush, McMahon's White, Ortley or yellow bell flower, Peck, Red Astrakhan, Rome Beauty, Rhode Island Greening, Rainbow, Seagrand Renette, Shiwasi Beauty, Spitzenberg, Twenty Ounce Pippin, Walbridge, Wayey, Wagner, Wolf River, White Pearmain, York Imperial, and yellow transparent. Good cider apples. Baldwin, Buckingham, Dyer Sweet, English Russet, Gravenstein, Golden Sweet, Imperial Rambo, Jeffries, Maiden Blush, Newton Pippin, Seek No Further, and Wolf River. Cider Making Distinct cider apples are not grown in the United States. 
All apples will not make good cider. Usually the more astringent apples make the best cider, but this does not always hold good. The astringency in the fruit is due to tannin, which is very essential to good cider. It helps in the clearing, and also adds to the keeping qualities of the cider. Sweet apples contain more juice than sour apples, but the cider is flat and tasteless and has poor keeping qualities. Bitter apples contain a great deal of tannin and make very little cider, but it has a rich pleasant flavor and good keeping qualities. As the sugar is converted into alcohol, the sugar content is very important. The best apples for cider making are those having a pleasant odor, a slightly sour, bitter taste, and the juice should have about one and five thousandths specific gravity. It is commonly supposed that any apple will give good cider. This is not true, however. Apples should be sound, clear, mature, and free from pest. Decayed and overripe fruit has lost its perfume, some of the water, and a large proportion of the sugar. The juice is hard to clarify and turns to vinegar very rapidly. Even a very small amount of decayed fruit renders the cider unpalatable. Following are the first nine recipes from 209 Ways of Preparing the Apple. Recipe 1 Afterthought one pint of nice apple sauce sweetened to taste. Stir in the yolks of two eggs well beaten. Bake for fifteen minutes. Bake with a meringue made of two well beaten whites and one half cup of powdered sugar. Return to the oven and brown. Recipe two Apples with almond praline, jelly, and cream. Core and pare ten apples. Cook in a syrup made of a cup of water and a cup of sugar. Turn the apples and cook until fork will pierce them in the hollow center. Set the cooked apples on a serving dish. Blanch and chop fine one-fourth of a cup of almonds. Cook three-fourths of a cup of sugar to a caramel. When the sugar begins to turn a light brown, add the nuts and stir constantly until the sugar is cooked enough. Put a spoonful of the caramel on top of each apple around the central opening. Put a teaspoon of currant jelly in the center of each apple. Beat a cup of cream until firm. Put this around the apples and serve. Recipe 3. Apricot Sherbet Served in Apple Shells Select bright red apples of uniform size. Rub until they have a high polish. Cut off the blossom end and scoop out the pulp. Carefully notch the edge. Fill with apricot sherbet and serve upon apple leaves. Recipe 4. Apple Balls with a Mixture of Fruit Peel large apples. With a potato scoop cut out small balls, dropping them into water with a little vinegar added to keep them white. Prepare a mixture of grapefruit pulp pineapple, and banana, and put into glasses. Add a few of the apple balls. Pour over all the juice left from the fruit, which has been boiled down with sugar. Cool and serve at once, or the apples may turn brown. Recipe 5 Apple Balls Served in Syrup Prepare the apple balls as above. Prepare a rich sugar syrup. Color with a little pink color paste and drop in the balls. Cook slowly until the balls are softened. Pile in glasses and add a little syrup to each glass. Serve cold. Recipe 6 Apples in Bloom and Cream Sauce Cook red apples in boiling water until soft. Have the water half surround the apples and turn often. Remove skins carefully that the red color may remain and arrange on serving dish. To the water add one cup of sugar, grated rind of one lemon, and juice of one orange. Simmer until reduced to one cup. Cool and pour over the apples. Serve with cream sauce.
Cream Sauce for Apples in Bloom Beat the white of one egg stiff, and the well-beaten yolk of one egg, and gradually add one cup of powdered sugar. Beat one half cup of thick cream and one fourth cup of milk until stiff. Combine the mixture and add one half teaspoon of vanilla. Recipe 7 Brown Betty 1 1 cup of bread crumbs, 8 sliced apples, 1 half cup of molasses, 1 half cup of cold water. Butter a baking dish. Put a layer of crumbs, then a layer of apples, sprinkle with cinnamon and sugar, and dot with bits of butter. Repeat until the dish is full. Insert a knife in several places and pour in the water and molasses. Set in a pan of hot water and bake for 45 minutes. Serve hot with cream or hard sauce. Recipe 8 Brown Betty 2 Pare and chop six apples. Place a layer of apple in a well-buttered pudding dish, then a layer of bread crumbs. Sprinkle with brown sugar and cinnamon. Repeat until the dish is full. Add several generous lumps of butter and pour sweet milk or hot water on until it comes within an inch of the top of the pan. Bake in a moderate oven until brown and serve with plain or whipped cream. Recipe 9 Brown Betty 3 Pour 4 teaspoons of melted butter over 1 and 1 half cups of soft bread crumbs. Stir until the crumbs are evenly buttered. Put a layer of the crumbs into a well-greased pudding dish. Mix one half cup of sugar, one pint of chopped apples, one cup of chopped raisins, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and one quarter of a teaspoon of cloves. Put a layer of the apple mixture over the crumbs and alternate until all is used, finishing with crumbs. Cover loosely and bake for three quarters of an hour in a moderate oven. Uncover and brown. Serve hot with hard sauce or cold with cream. End of selection from 209 Ways of Preparing the Apple by L. Gertrude McKay Read by Mary in Arkansas